All right, hello. Welcome back. For those of you returning and uh, for those of you that are new to this Facebook Live, this is uh, Fireside Chat and I'm Patrick Dean and I am the owner of a company called Seminar Systems and we do coaching and mentoring and uh, personal development and relationship seminars all over the world. But I'm really glad to be able to talk with you this afternoon. And the people that I'm hoping that are on this uh, Facebook Live are all of you who have a problem with sales. All of you that um, kind of cringe at the idea of sales or that it's a little bit difficult for you or you'd like some ideas about how to have a breakthrough in the area of sales. And so I am going to join you and I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've learned working with some of the top salespeople in the world. And I am one of those people like you that it's much easier for me to promote other people and other things than myself. I have not considered myself to be a great salesperson, but I've changed that around a little bit and I'm working with it all the time. So I want to talk about my journey with you and then we're going to go over some of the ideas that are going to give you some practical experience to go out there with, some practical action to take. And then I'm going to have some <laughs> homework for you. And uh, for those of you that are bold enough to take it on, I'm going to have some homework for you. So we don't have very long together, but... Um, I wanted to start off telling you a story. A while ago, I was the student, I was a student in a training. And in that training, we did a lot of breakthrough work. We did, I, I got to confront my, all the things that have held me back from my past. I got to take a look at my relationships with people. I got to have some emotional experiences about uh, getting free. And then I also got an experience of what I was, uh, my purpose, what I was here for. And all of that happened in this amazing training. Now, some of you on here uh, are watching this, um, watching this Facebook Live have been to those personal development transformational trainings. And some of you may not have. So uh, anytime that you have an opportunity to take those trainings, you want to jump in if you haven't done so already and get into those kind of trainings because really you can uh, you can really discover some things about yourself that uh, are amazing and you know speed you up in your movement in life and anyway so I was in this training and all five days of this training I thought wow breakthrough after breakthrough everything was going great and then on the last day of the training and the last four hours of the training or three hours of the training we got an exercise an assignment to do so here was the assignment. You're going to be leaving the, on all of you, I want, to note, I want you to notice the um, uh, instructions for this assignment because it's going to be part of your homework, actually. So the assignment went this way. You're going to be leaving this room and you have three hours and you're going to go out into the world since you've been in this room and been with all these people the whole time, we're going to take a look at doing something practical. So you're going to go out in the world and here's what I want you to do. The instructor was, was talking about the instructions, which were this, go out and meet and make a brand new friend. So what that meant was go out and meet somebody that you haven't met before. But in addition to that, you're to take them to lunch and you are to buy their lunch. Now, so put yourself in this place where you've got to go out and meet somebody that uh, you don't know who that is. You may be in a strange city or you may be in a, uh, a place that you've never been uh, before, but that was the assignment. And so what happened for me was this, that all this stuff that I thought that I had broken through on, that I've had a breakthrough on, that I can really connect with people, all that stuff that uh, came up for me again. And I started to get an incredible resistance to this exercise. Now in this training, we had a, I had a buddy. And this buddy 
she was uh, she was uh, an amazing promoter, a great salesperson. She was a business owner, and when this exercise was announced, she just went, "Oh man, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I want. This is this is going to be great." And she looked over at me, and I was going, "Oh, I cannot believe that I've gotten this assignment." We went out together. We were doing the training in Los Angeles. We went to the Museum of Art in, uh, in LA. When we got there, I sat, I looked around, and there was these modern art benches that were like rocks. And I sat on that bench. And I thought to myself, this assignment is so difficult for me, so hard. I can't imagine myself doing it at all. That's kind of the place I was in at that time. And so I sat and I thought to myself, I think I'll just leave the seminar and go home. But of course, rules of the game and also uh, my buddy there, I had to think of something else. So you were supposed to get the name and the phone number of the person you met so they could tell that you actually did the seminar. So I thought to myself, what would be the next thing I could do? How could I, how could I work this? So I thought maybe I'll tear a name out of the L.A. phone book and say I, <laughs> I met that person. Now, the way things were working, I thought the whole car- the karma of it was going to work this way. If I, told, if I tore somebody's name out of the phone book, Swear to God, out of, out of uh, three or four or five million people, uh, I thought one of my classmates would actually meet that person and I'd get busted when I went back to class. So anyway, I sat on that bench. Now, what my buddy did was this. And for those of you that are shy in sales, here's what my buddy did. My buddy went into the, um, into the gift store, got a bunch of brochures for the museum, and stood out in the quad because the LA Museum of Art is like it's a three three sided uh, three buildings. And she stood out in the quad and said, "Here's uh, here's what uh, she said. Uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to start a tour. So a tour is going to be starting. So she shouted out, "A tour is going to be st- uh, starting." And people started to gather around her. And she passed out the brochures. And before she did this to her, she read the brochures. And then what she did was she gathered up perhaps, you know, 10 or, 10 or 12 people, a lot of Japanese tourists with cameras and other people. And she started to take them on a tour of a museum that I don't think she'd been to before. Very bold. Then she took them to the cafeteria and she bought them all lunch. And that was her way of fulfilling the, um, the, the, the rules of the exercise. Now for me, of course, I'm sitting there watching her. We weren't supposed to interact or help each other, just keep an eye on each other for safety. But I sat there on that rock. And I looked over and a little ways away was a very elderly woman. And she was sitting there. And I looked over and I thought, okay, this is my chance. And I walked over, sat down next to her and said something like, uh, do you come here often? <laughs> Brilliant, right? Brilliant line. It's like meeting somebody on the top of Everest and going, and do you come here often? <laughs> so anyway, she, uh, she started to talk with me and to make a long story short, she was a member of the museum. And she had two tickets, and she didn't have a person to take her in. And her eyesight was failing, and she wanted me to go in and maybe help her read the captions underneath the great paintings that we were going to look at. It just so happened the tickets were for a special showing only for members of the museum. So I got to see a show of beautiful Renaissance art before anyone else or before the general public with this lady on my arm, and I got to read to, to her the captions for all the paintings. Now, when I got back to class, I started to think about my life and how I'd run my life in the fact of really being conservative and stepping back and not reaching out, and how this was one of the most amazing experiences for me, is to really get my courage up and to start to talk to other people. 
And the reason I share that story is for those of us that want to be successful at sales. Perhaps you're in network marketing and you want to be successful at that business. Well, I have an idea for you about ways you can do that. So let's talk about the fact that the first thing that you got to master in that is you got to master connection. In other words, that you can talk to people wherever you are at. So let's talk about what qualities that you can bring forth that are going to bring people into your experience or keep people talking to you or keep people around you so you can start conversations no matter where you are. But I want to start with not the how-tos, but I want to start with uh, the beingness that attracts people. I talked a little bit about this in the last Facebook Live last week, so I want to go into it a little bit more again. And for those of you who didn't see it, of course, this is the first time for you. So number one, in beingness, how you, how you be, number one is... Um, is understanding and having a knowledge of your product or what it is you want to sell. So you want to be knowledgeable in what you're talking about. Do your study and do your homework. The next thing is, is energy. Your energy will either attract people most people are looking for energetic people to be around. Because have you noticed that when we're around a really great and energetic person, we kind of catch fire ourselves a little bit or we pick up that energy. So you can be either a person that's taking energy from others or you can be a person that's adding energy to whatever and whomever is around you, whoever is around you. So you can add energy. So how do you... How do you increase your level of energy with people? Well, the first thing is you take a look at why you want to connect with people. Now, people talk about sales. And I think a picture that we all sell, see is this kind of used car salesman with this, with this plaid suit on. And we see this pushy or aggressive person or this overly talkative person or this person that is, is uh, really uh, pushing you toward doing something or taking some action. But I would like you to really let go of all that. And I would like you to contextualize sales as connection and sales as problem solving. You see, no matter what your product or service is, it solves a problem for someone. So the idea of sales is the idea of solving problems for people. If we can really get rid of that other picture and see this sales as problem solving, then what we can do is really move out of the self-consciousness about this or these negative pictures we have and move into something much more intimate, much more close, much more exciting, much more fun to do. So you are, in essence, a problem solver. No matter what your product is or what your service is, that's what you do. So how do you, how do you um, sell that product or service? Well, one of the things I said was knowledge. The other thing was energy. Okay, the other thing that I really want you to work in with is certainty. Certainty shows up in people all the time. You can feel when a person feels certain about what they're talking about. And it's not so much in their, their voice or how they carry themselves. Some of that's it. But basically, a person who's certain knows that their product or service is going to make the difference that they say it's going to make. So your product or service, um, you can ask yourself the following question. Does my product, does my service do what it says it's going to do? Am I clear on that? And that's like a binary question, ladies and gentlemen. 
That's a question, either yes or no. And if you say yes, that means you believe in your product. That means that you have a certainty about that product or service. And then you get yourself out of the way enough to see yourself as a problem solver and be in conversation with people. But basically, before you talk product, before you talk about anything, you want to work on this beingness. This beingness of energy, this beingness of certainty, this being of no beingness of knowledge. And finally, I want to um, talk about one of the greatest qualities you can develop in your life, and that's curiosity. And we talked about it last week. I'm going to talk about it over and over. Being actually being curious about people. Being curious when you ask questions. People understand that you're actually looking and listening to the answer. Now, one of the greatest mistakes that we make as salespeople or as people that are problem solving is that we don't know what the person's problem is they have. We haven't been in conversation long enough with them to determine that. So creating connection with people, no matter where you are. And there are many people that your product will not solve the problem that they have. But you want to find that out. You want to talk with people. A lot of people go through life with people not ever asking them questions about what's going on in their life or how they feel or what they're experiencing. So there's a process of service just if you are curious. So those four things, um, energy, certainty, knowledge, and curiosity are what you leave the house. Just remember to bring your energy up. Does your product work? Yes or no? Be certain about it. Know what you're talking about. Do the research. And I'm not talking about just a lot of anecdotal uh, Aunt May lost this amount of weight or this kind of stuff. But you know your product backwards and forwards. So when you run into people who are analytical, you can sound like you know what you're talking about because they're going to ask questions and they can tell whether you have knowledge or not. So... Once you have started to master those things, then you want to engage with people no matter where you're at. So I was flying to the island of Guam, believe it or not, to do a, a training in Guam. And I happened to be flying business class and I was sitting next to this gentleman. Now, Brian Clemmer, one of my great mentors and great friends used to say that every time that you meet someone is an opportunity. And he said to have questions written down in your wallet, in your purse, that you would ask a person who is accomplished or ask a person who is famous or ask a person who has um, done something in their life or accomplished or mastered something. And what he said was, turn off your need to talk about yourself and turn on that ability to ask questions. So I asked this gentleman a question, and he turned out to be a congressman. And I asked him, um, what is one of the greatest qualities of leadership? And He'd, have, he'd had a couple cocktails, and, um, as congressmen will do, and he laughed, and here's what he told me. He said, I ran for office the first time, and I was, comp I was just beaten horribly, hardly any votes at all. And then I ran again, and I got a few more votes. And then I ran again, and I got really close, but I lost. And then I ran for the fourth time, and I won the seat. So what I have learned is one of the greatest qualities of leadership is determination. That I was kind of the last man standing, he said, that kept going at it because I really believed that what I could do was make a difference. And that's what I learned by asking questions. 
Now, I could have inundate him, in, in, inundated him with all kinds of my ideas or what I thought or all that kind of stuff. But that's what I learned by asking questions. So what I did here for us, for this Facebook Live, is I posted some questions. Now, most of the time, you guys are going to come up with better questions. But I wanted, for those of you that, that, that kind of freeze up or that you have a hard time engaging people at, a, at, a, uh, at an airport or a train station or the market or other places, you have trouble engaging people, there are some questions that you can ask that'll get you going. So here's some of the questions I put together. And as I said, you're going to have uh, better questions when it comes down to it. So the first question is, what's important to you? As I said, there's a lot of people that have never had another person actually ask them that question. What is important to you? Even people close to them. Most people want to talk about themselves. So take advantage of this idea that you can, you can get people talking and you're going to learn amazing things about people. Here's one that, that I talk about with people. What's the last great movie you saw? Or what is your favorite movie? And you will learn a lot about people by what they consider a great movie or a movie that moved them in some way. Uh, I ask people about their children. Or if they don't have kids, why not? Or are they married or not? I mean, just being curious because I'm curious about the different ways people raise kids. Uh, what do you like about the city you live in? What's the biggest challenge that you have in your life right now? A great question. Or if you're uh, 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 talking to business people, what is the greatest challenge in the business? When you're around people, like the ones that I mentioned last week, like these amazing coaches and amazing network marketers, like Carla Puentes or, or uh, uh, Janet Henze or uh, Mary Jo Hilliker, uh, Scott Poland, people like that that have proven their ability to move people. They're fantastic. And the great thing is when you get around these people, ask them questions about their success. And they'll tell you about the ups and downs of everything. So take the, take the time to ask questions. What have you always wanted to, where have you always wanted to travel? That's a great question. What do you do for a living? And what are the things that make uh, f for that profession, uh, what qualities do you have to do, do you have to have and what skills do you have to have to be good at it? I'm very interested in what people talk about. And you know, a lot of times they'll talk about beingness. They'll talk about it's not so much the skill, it's the being of the job that makes them that has them successful. So the last thing I want to talk about before I give you your homework, is now you have some questions to ask. You can go anywhere. You can you can write these questions down from from my my post on Facebook. There, uh, nobody else is going to know what the hell I was posting there, but you guys will. Now, the final thing to master, if you want to be really great at connecting with people, at moving people, at seeing people uh, that are, or, or, or having your product out there so people can take advantage of it or use it or um, really benefit from what you've got, you want to take a look at your own competing commitments. All of us have these competing commitments and you want to get some coaching from somebody who is successful and work through competing commitments. So what do I mean by competing commitments? Competing commitments are go like this. I really want to be successful, but I also want to avoid conflict. That avoidance of conflict. I really want to be successful, but I want to be approved of. I really want to be successful, but I also want to be liked. I want to be seen as nice, but I want to be successful, but I'm a rebel. That's a common one. I want to be successful, but I don't want to lose control. I want to be successful, but I want to hear yeses. I want to be successful. However, I want to be admired. Um, I, want to be I want to be seen as successful rather than be successful. So all of the, we all have a story 
with a competing commitment. If you understand your competing commitment, if you understand some of the personalities and stuff that have kept you from really jumping in and being out there and connecting with people, you understand this because we all have it. There isn't anybody that doesn't have competing commitments. Some of us have just kind of started to master them a little bit as well as, as you can as well. So for those of you that have been flying under the radar, those of you that haven't been pushing yourself out there, what I want you to do is look at your product or service as the greatest opportunity of your life to learn this skill. If you can learn the skill of connection with people and asking great questions, that will serve you for the rest of your life. So now I have some homework for you. And the homework goes like this. For those of you that choose to challenge yourself, by Sunday, this is uh, Wednesday the 23rd, by Sunday, what I would like you to do any day this week is go out and do that exercise where you meet and make a brand new friend. Now, this is not somebody that you know already. This is going to the mall. This is going to the re a restaurant. This is going to a museum. This is going somewhere where you haven't been and you go alone and you go out and you meet someone. Now, be smart about where you go and use your intuition with who you meet, but go out there and buy them lunch. Enroll them in having lunch with you. This is part of the sales training. Get engaged and ask them some of these questions. And here's what I think will happen. You will start to master your reticence to connect with people. It would not take long, maybe two weeks of doing it every day, and you would have an incredible breakthrough. One time is great. One time is great. That's my challenge for you. Just do it once. But once you start to master this, then the idea of getting out there, and you will notice that people really do want to talk. There's a few that'll tell you to take a hike. They don't want to talk or think you're weird or whatever, but you want to get over that because you're going to find people who are appreciative to sit with somebody, to talk with somebody, and you be the person that bring that gift to them. So you want to be hungry for results. You want to be coachable, okay? And I want you to report back to your, if you're in network marketing, home-based business or business where somebody's been to trainings or they're a great coach, report back to them and tell them what happened. Then what I'd like you to do, if you actually take this on, is I'd like you to Facebook message me and tell me that you did it. Just say, yes, I did the exercise. If you do that, Facebook message me, what I will do is I will give you one of the brand new one of the chapters to my brand new book I'm writing. This isn't out at all. And the chapter that I want to give you is called The Code of the Warrior. So in this chapter, you're going to have all the codes of different warriors, like the Rangers, uh, the Knights of the Middle Ages, the Samurai Code, of course, Bushido, um, Army Warriors. Uh, United States Marine Corps, the Viking laws, um, uh, Middle Ages, ancient Chinese. You're going to have all these warrior codes that I am going to give you free of charge. And that's just for, you're going to get those as an email and for doing this exercise. So get out there, make the difference you were, you were born to make, connect with people, and we will see you next week on our Facebook Live. I appreciate all of you guys. And get out there and make somebody's day. They might think you're a little crazy, but that's okay. Brian used to, Brian Clemmer used to say, it's okay to have people think you're a little crazy. It gives you some leverage. <laughs> anyway, this is Patrick Dean. Good night. Thank you very much.